Good morning, everyone, again, and welcome to uh, this Gagam session on implementing sushi for counter five in Alma. Today, we have with us Lee Chen, head of systems and a librarian professor at Kennesaw State University. We also have with us this morning Marie Day. She's a systems librarian also at Kennesaw State University. Thank you to both for bringing this presentation to us today. Let's get started. Thank you, Joy. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, first, let me uh, give a brief introduction on why we start the project. As of January 2020, Alma is fully compliant with the counter release five. At that time, uh, Kennesaw State University Library used counter release four in Alma. Also, assessment library needs reports on usage data of ebooks and e journal. Um, of course, we can go to each vendor's website, obtain this information, but it is very time consuming. By putting counter reports in Alma, it makes electronic usage data centralized. We can get usage data one stop from Alma Analytics. So what is a SUSI and counter? SUSI stands for Standardized Usage Statistic Harvesting Initiative. It is a communication protocol. If the vendor supports the SUSI protocol, the librarian can set up the connection and the types of reporting in Alma to automatically retrieve and upload the electronic resources usage data. Counter stands for counting online usage of networked electronic resources. Counter is a nonprofit organization supported by library, publisher, and the vendor members. Counter provides code of practice to enable publishers and the vendors to report usage of electronic resources in a consistent way. Counter helps librarians demonstrate the electronic usage stacks. The advantage of using Counter Release 5 over Release 4 is that Release 5 reduce overall number of reports with replacing four master reports and adding two usage type in journal reporting and the database reporting. So when we started to add the SUSI Counter Release 5 project, we had a limited manpower and time. So we divide the project into two parts ebooks and e-journals. From September to November 2020, we did ebooks. We started e-journal in March 2021, and we will complete the project on time in June 2021. We started the project during COVID-19 pandemic hit. Since everyone works from home, we use the Microsoft Planner to keep track of our progress and centralize useful document. Before we started to add counter release five, there are quite few documents and the videos help us to understand how to add counter release five in Alma. There are documents from Xlibra, managing counter compliant usage data View Wiki also has a document um, on it. There are videos from Xlibra adding SUSI count, counter release five usage data harvesting in Alma and Alma Analytics, reload usage data files that failed to upload. Um, the following documents are very useful. We constantly consult it when we add counter release five reporting armor. Register of compliance publisher and vendors, almost 
SUSI certified vendor R4, R5 contains information on how to configure for each vendor, counter report names and explanation helps to better understand what each vendor reports for. To configure SUSI account, to manage SUSI harvesting, you must have a vendor manage roles. You can manually upload and delete counter data if you have a usage operator or manager or vendor manager role. Uh, now I will turn to Marie. She will demonstrate our process and how to configure counter release five in Alma. I'll stop share. Okay, thank you Lee for walking us through all the preparation necessary for a smooth implementation. Now we'll look at Alma and see what adding a sushi vendor account looks like. All the pages I'm showing you are linked in our presentation slides. So you'll be able to see those in just a moment while I share my screen. Okay, let's uh, start with our uh, preparation. So as Lee mentioned, we use Microsoft Planner and that's similar to Trello if you've used that. And we put our dates, uh, meetings, this is good. It, uh, if you have multiple people working on the project, added our files. Our main file that we worked from was a list of sushi vendors. And of course, before we started, we didn't know for sure which vendors support sushi and which ones don't. So the answers for some of the vendors is no, they don't offer sushi. So we use this red and green color scheme. We check first, is this vendor certified in Alma? And then we went through the process to get the account set up. And then we made a note, did we set it up? Uh, is it just not available? Here's our plan and instruction with all the links about how to do it, information about the vendors, information in Alma. This is one of the main pages that you will be using if you decide to implement Sushi is the Sushi vendor list in the Xlibus Knowledge Center. And you can see that they are listed alphabetically by name with the vendor URL, you won't have to input that into Alma, it'll be added automatically. And then sometimes there are instructions on setting up the account, what the vendor requires. You'll also need all your passwords and logins for all your accounts. This is the registry of compliant publishers and vendors on the Project Counter website. This is a page that you'll be consulting frequently. They have two sections, audited entity and supported platform. You can search in the search box or you can just click on the vendor. So the one I'll be using today is Harvard University Press. And then when you click on the vendor, you get this page which tells you something about the vendor. There may be more or less information there and which reports that they offer, release four and release five. A lot of vendors are discontinuing their release four reports now and going to release five. So you can see the key here, that which reports are available or unavailable, and then you can check and see which ones this vendor offers. And then down at the bottom, there may be more information and these, these fields will be helpful to you, the customer ID and requester ID. Those are the two most common pieces of information that you'll need about your account in order to set up a sushi service. So let's start in Alma. We're gonna to go to the vendor list. You can see I've already added it to my favorites because we've been working on this project for a few months. Also, you could go to acquisitions and vendors. 
and then you'll get an alphabetical list of all the vendors in your instance of Alma. Once you've been working on this project, you could limit just by sushi vendor, then you'll get a shorter list. And this vendor is a little different from most. Usually we go, you know, add X, um, EBSCOhost under EBSCOhost, Gale under Gale. We don't actually have Harvard University Press as a vendor, and we're going to add them under Lyricist. We did consult with our acquisitions unit before we decided on that. You can add multiple accounts. Now, adding the Sushi account is always under usage data. It's always going to be under that tab. So Lyricist always already has Psychiatry Online set up. Now we're going to add Harvard University Press. Uh, for example, ProQuest has ProQuest and ProQuest eBook Central. When you add the Sushi account, you just click over here, add Sushi account, and we're adding release five. Now up here, the name of the Sushi account. When we first started this project, I would type in a few letters and hit enter. I read that somewhere in the help pages, but that didn't work very well because when I did that, the vendor URL was not automatically populated. And then I would try to construct an override URL. And then when it when Alma checks, it's constructing the URL and it was double, it was, it was a mess. So don't do that. Go to the list and then select your vendor from the list. This list again is alphabetical and you'll see some information, other institutions that have used this before, whoever contributed to the community. So when I select that, you see it's automatically filled in. The URL is grayed out. We don't have to do anything with that. Someone's already tested it and Harvard University Press is already on the approved vendor page uh, right here. That's the Ex Libris help page. And of course we sell it on Project Counter. So now we need our credentials. As I mentioned before, usually requester ID and customer ID are the ones that you're gonna need. So let's go over to the vendor website and sign in. So in this vendor, there's, there are multiple accounts. We're going to the organization. Now, every vendor's website looks a little bit different. So you're gonna have to look around and see where is usage data. And they'll say something about usage or reports. In this case, reports. And a lot of vendors have their own platform for running usage accounts. Now this vendor, there are multiple platforms for this, uh, for this one publisher. And we subscribe to Lib Classical Library. And the CC information is usually down at the bottom. Sometimes you have to click through to another page. But here you can see our requester ID, our customer ID, and we have the reports that they support. This is great, everything nice, clear in one space. There's some more information if Alma weren't constructing these API calls for you. And then some information, ah, this vendor requires an API key. We can get it from the account details page, good and then multiple platforms are available. So you'll need a platform parameter. Aha, uh -huh. so a little, some extra pieces for this account. So let's go ahead and copy and paste the requester ID. Okay, now this vendor requires the API key and they said that's on their details page. Now, the first time I looked at this page, there was no API key. So I just looked at the sections and I said, hmm, what would that be under? And I saw external ID. I said, okay, that sounds plausible. And then there was a field over on the right where uh, 
the information could be generated. And it didn't actually say generate your API key here. It says something else, but you know, it looks but okay, that, that's probably it. And yes, it was. So after I click through there, now the API key is there when you go back to look at it. And that goes over here on the right. Okay, great, let's test our connection. So what happens is in, with the server call, we get a JSON file back from the server. So this opens up in Firefox. So can you see the Firefox? No, Marie. Okay, let me share that. Didn't give me the option first for some reason. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Now you see it. Okay. So here we have a message insufficient information to process requests. Fetal error. Oh my gosh. But good, it tells us what is wrong. The platform name is missing or is invalid. Oh yeah, this one requires a platform. Okay, so let's go back. So now, uh, can you see the vendor site again? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so low classical library. So what I did the first time I looked at this, I actually generated a report on their system and looked at it because I thought, well, what's the platform? Is it a, some kind of abbreviation or something like engineering village with EV? Well, it turns out it's just the actual name, low classical library. So we're gonna type that in. Okay, now let's test our connection. Okay, here's our new JSON file. And I will pull that one up. Oh, it's not showing you that. One, yeah, it's it? show. It's show. Marie. It is. Oh, okay, good. Great. So now we get the message service active true. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for that green true. So, yay. Everything is set up. At this point, the next thing you want to do is hit save. So, absolutely save your work at this point because everything's working and we want that to be set. So now the account has been created. Let's go back into the account and add the reports. So add report type is over at the bottom right. And we saw the list on the vendor website. It doesn't actually matter what order you put them in. Now let's say I get carried away. I'm just clicking around and adding report types. And actually we saw they don't offer an item report. So let's say I save it and I think I'm good to go. Here we see an error message report type IRA1 is not supported by the vendor and has been deactivated. So if we look at the account down at the bottom, then you see that report is grayed out. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. We don't need that. Yes, we want to delete it. I'm gonna go ahead and add the other reports that they support, which is PR master report and PRP1. Okay, great. So we can save our work again at this point. Now, if it's, this is the first time that you've set an account up, Alma is gonna check back for 12 months from, it'll check this past month and then 12 months back for you. So if you wanna try that out, you can click on the three dots and then harvest now. It gives us a confirmation message. Yes, we wanna do that. And then you'll see 
a message pops up here, we can click on this process ID number and go over to the monitor jobs page. And so we see here's my job, sushi harvesting job, my ID number and the date. And the fact that it's in this running jobs tab is good. That means that it's taking it a minute to bring some information back for us. If it had gone directly to the history tab, then oh, probably something was wrong or could just be there was no data available. And I have not seen this progress update. It's usually 0.0%. So I go over to the history and then look for it. And here's my job with a lovely green check mark successfully completed. Super. If we want to look at the report, we can go to the load usage data. And again, that's under uh, acquisitions load usage data. So this has all the files that were recently uploaded into Alma. And you can see if it's by an automatic process or by an individual. And you have a report success rate. You can limit the list by sushi account if you want to look at just something particular or by vendor. The monthly usage data tab is very nice because you get an overall glimpse. Now, for some reason, we have a year four. Not sure about that. We're working on that. But let's look at 2020. That'll give us a better view. So you can see overall, all the months are listed. There's a green check mark that says usage report was successfully retrieved. Usually the yellow ones are just that there was no usage available for that month and that particular report. So that's a really nice overview. So let me double check that I've showed you everything that I wanted you to see. We looked at the vendor list, project counter, how to find information from the vendor, uh, testing the connection and saving your work. The service active true message. The monthly usage data. Okay, very good. So let's go now to how can you use the data? So all this data, once you've collected it, you can run reports in analytics. So here's an example. I pulled all the data from the TRB1 report, unique title request. And that gives us a number for ebook usage. You can see most of our ebooks are through EBSCOhost or ProQuest ebook central, like you would expect. When we do you want to share your PowerPoint? Oh, are you not seeing it? I do no, want to share my PowerPoint. Yeah, Thank you. you can see it. Okay. You'll need to stop sharing. Well, stop sharing and reshare? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I still see your website. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, good. So here's the uh, report data that I mentioned from TRV1, unique title request, and that you can pull in Alma Analytics, and you can pull all the other data that's brought in by this sushi harvesting process. So at this point, we want to review to summarize our presentation, Alma can gather usage data for you automatically. After a one-time setup process that I just showed you, it's a really good idea to gather your vendor login information and learn about the process ahead of time. Definitely watch those Ex Libris videos and uh, get familiar with the process. 
One thing you may come across is that there may be conflicting information between vendor websites and project calendar. And this can be frustrating, if, especially when you first start and don't have a lot of successful account setups behind you. So that may require a little extra research and testing and perseverance on your part. And then the resulting data can be used in analytics reports. So this is definitely a manageable project and you can work on it over time, interspersing it with your other duties. So we'd like to thank you for attending our presentation on implementing SUSHI protocol in Alma. And we'd like to address any questions from the audience at this point. Great, thank you so much, Marie and Lee for that presentation. Our, we do have one question in the Q&A from Susanna Smith. Do you pool usage data from Galileo provided resources? That is a good question and I think um, for Marie and me, we don't pull. Maybe assessment library notes, right? I have to double check on that. I I believe that it's just that it is a little confusing. Like for example, um, you you can you can get it from the publisher, not necessarily the provider. So like this vendor that we showed publishes a journal, but we don't actually, you know, have a service from that vendor. So sometimes it gets a little confusing. And okay. we we'll have to double check on that one. Okay. Uh, we have a second question from Simon Hunt. Do you have a troubleshooting process for confirming the data both for accuracy and successful loading? Ah, that's sort of a next step because I, I did see that uh, there was one institution that had, had gotten some reports from ProQuest that were not the full reports. When they went to their site, they pulled up a lot more information than they got through their sushi harvested reports. So um, one, one thing we just done recently is on our vendor list, we had early English books online from Chadwick Healy. Now that's a part of ProQuest. And so we thought, well, do we, is there some special site for Chadwick Healy? Are we getting this through ProQuest? How do we know? So what we did, we went into Alma and we downloaded one of the reports from ProQuest and we searched for EB, EEBO and early English books online. And then we did see it was a platform that was reported in that report so we could confirm, yes, we're getting that data. So we can check that vendor off our list. It's included under ProQuest. Okay, great. Thank you for that answer. I'm not seeing any hands raised right now, but if there are folks who have a question and want to ask it aloud, go ahead and use the raise your hand feature. Give you a little bit time here to see if you want to do that. And then as far as the Q&A, if there are any additional questions, please go ahead and type them into the Q&A area. Give you a little bit of time here to see if there are any additional questions. Um, and do feel free to send us an email. If yeah, you can yeah. Later. Definitely. Um, their presentation, these slides will be available on immediately after the presentation on the conference platform. And their email addresses, of course, will be there. So feel free to reach out to them if you want to ask a question directly. And then the recording will be available probably beginning next week if you want to review the recording again as well. And so seeing no additional questions pop up, I wanna go ahead and thank both Marie and Lee 
for doing this presentation this morning. This is actually Lee's second presentation of the conference. So thank you so much, Lee, for, um, for pulling a second presentation together. And I hope that you and Marie have a great rest of your day. And for the Duggam attendees here, um, we have four, one, two, three, four more sessions throughout today. And um, we hope you enjoy the rest of your time. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Yeah, thank you, Joyce. And thank everyone for attending our session. Thank you. Have a good conference. Yeah. Bye-bye.